uh, with so beautiful temperature right. Usually it's uh, this is one of these mornings we're shivering and we've got blankets and this kind of thing, and that's okay too, but uh, for the Lord to send us such a beautiful day and to remember the events that happened 2,000 years ago, this Holy Week, where our Lord, He turned His face back toward Jerusalem, having you and I on His mind, and he went into the upper room as we celebrated Thursday night and he sat with his disciples and he said, I, I desire to eat this meal with you. He did so because he wanted them to understand uh, what was happening. That the events that were going to happen, be happening in the next uh, uh, three or four days, they were going to impact not only their lives, but the lives of all people. And you and I, as we come here this morning, we come to celebrate uh, what Jesus told his disciples 2,000 years ago, uh, that in three days he would arise and that he would be offered up as a sacrifice for yours and my sins. He had you and I on his mind. He knew that you and I, we needed a Savior. The only way that you and I could ever find forgiveness would be through him. And he knew that, Je that, that his father had sent him here for a purpose. And he could have left that area. He could have not went to the cross, but he loved us too much so that here this morning, you and I can rejoice together. So thank you for being here. And uh, let me just give you uh, the schedule here today. As soon as we finish here, we're gonna be, we invite each and every one of you to the fellowship hall. So we're gonna have breakfast and then immediately following, we'll have Sunday school. And then approximately 8.45, we'll be uh, uh, having our worship service. So uh, uh, we hope each one of you will join us for breakfast. I went down there. They're really cooking, and I think it's gonna, we're going to have a great breakfast, great time of fellowship together here, here today. Uh, let me uh, share just a couple passages of Scripture here, if I may, and then we're going to sing a song. Recorded out of Matthew's Gospel, the 28th chapter, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he riseth from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and also with great joy. And they did run to bring his disciples to word. And as they went uh, to tell his disciples, uh, behold, all hell, they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. May we pray. Our heavenly father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have uh, given to us. You have blessed us with it, Father. We hear the beauty of nature all around, and that nature, Father, has been created and is sustained by you. And Father, you have created all this beautiful earth for you, for each of us to enjoy. But also, Father, here this morning, we come to remember and to celebrate that as the as ladies went to that tomb 2,000 years ago, uh, Father, that that tomb did not house the body of Christ that he had risen. Father, we, we too have that joy and that radiance that, that the women uh, had that morning as the angel told them to go quickly and to tell the disciples that Jesus has arisen just as he said. May that joy of Easter, may that joy of the resurrection, may it be imparted to each one of our hearts and lives and souls this morning as we gather here to remember and to say thank you, Lord, for what you have done for each of us. For because Jesus lives, each of us, too, may live eternally by knowing him as Lord and Savior of our lives. Bless us now as we continue this time of praise and worship. 
For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <coughs> Sing with us. Oh, in the great he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he rose, with the mighty tribe for his souls. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep its prey, Jesus my illustration uh, the Messiah the production of the Messiah was going on and the conductor uh, they got to the place where the chorus was sung through the point where the soprano solo takes up and begins uh, I know that my Redeemer liveth the soloist technique was just perfect she had faultless breathing accurate note placing and flawless Enunciation. After the final note was sang, all eyes were fixed on the conductor to catch his look of approval. Instead, he silenced the orchestra and he walked up to the singer with sorrowful eyes. And he said, My daughter, do you really know that your Redeemer liveth? Do you really know? She turned red in the face and she said, why, yes, I think I do. Conductor paused for just a moment and said, then sing it. Tell it to me so that I will know. And all who hear you will know that you know the joy and you know the power of it. Then he motioned to the orchestra to play again. This time she sang the truth as she knew it and had experienced it in her own soul. And all who heard it, even in the orchestra, were weeping. The old master conductor approached her with a tear-dimmed eyes, and he said, You do know, for now you have told me. For now you have told me. Each of us here this morning, we know that Jesus liveth. We know, there's no doubt in our mind, but let me issue a challenge to each of us, it steps on my toes as well, that we live it, that we sing it, that we proclaim it, that we announce it to all who will listen that he lives. This is why, if you'll turn, and I want you just to turn and look at this beautiful sun, it's just coming up. Isn't that beautiful though? See, not too bright that we can't look upon it. But look as the sun is coming up. Darkness had fallen over all the world, at least in the apostles and those that loved Jesus so much. Dark days had come. There was disappointment. There was agonizing. Some had to even get away because they could not stand it. Because they were hurting. And all seemed gloom and doom. 
But as the ladies entered that, headed to the tomb, and they saw that massive stone roll back, darkness gave way to the S-O-N shine because there wasn't a body to anoint. He had arose. May we find comfort, may we find strength in that, that knowledge of knowing who Jesus is and know Him as our Savior. And if we know Him, let others see Jesus in us. Let others see that brightness. Don't let them see that darkness. Don't let them see that discouragement. And it's so easy to do. It's so easy for you and I to only look on that difficult side of life. We all have it. The scriptures reminds us it rains on the just and the unjust. They are difficult times. There are storms. It's not a question of whether storms are going to come. It's when they're going to come. They come in all of our lives. But it's how you and I deal with it, with those, those things in life. It's what really <laughs> makes our lives successful, but also what brings us that inner joy and that peace that Jesus sought to bring each of us and those that went to that tomb that morning. As they saw that the tomb was empty, the angels told the ladies, you go and you run and you tell the disciples. They ran with joy because what had seemed like just paying respect, now it was, he's alive. He's alive and now I'll run and I'll tell the disciples. Life now, that seemed as though we didn't know what was going to happen. Now, they knew things now had, had changed and it was different. Each of us here this morning, we come to celebrate what Jesus has done for each of us in our own lives. So let me encourage you. Let this be the beginning of this day is a joyous day, but every day as we get up. Someone said uh, that, uh, uh, that we ought to really think about uh, uh, being thankful for everything that our Heavenly Father uh, gives to us. And uh, uh, if, if, we, if God only acknowledged and showed us the things that we thanked Him for, where would we be? Because when we start thinking about it, what do we thank the Lord for? What are you thanking God for? Is it just a handful of things that we're giving Him, acknowledging Him as the giver of all? He owns all. So let me encourage you. And I'm going to, uh, at, at this time, I want to stand up, and uh, for those that have just, have just come up, uh, we want everyone to, to share in breakfast. If you're visiting with us, we'd be delighted to have you as our guest in the fellowship hall, the last building directly behind. You can just go, go to the left side of the building or you can go to the right side of the building. And uh, we'd love to have you to share uh, share breakfast. I want us also to have our time of uh, our uh, devotion here as, as well as our blessing upon the food also here as we go now. Let's bow for prayer if we may. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for, for Easter. We thank you, Father, for uh, you giving your only begotten Son for each of our lives. And Father, we pray that each of us, that we're going to proclaim Jesus with every step we take, that we're going to sing it with every opportunity we have, that we're going to walk it with every step that we take. And Father, that others will see Jesus in and through our steps and our lives, and that we shall not forget to say thank you, Lord, for each blessing, for everything that we have or ever will have, or the events and circumstances that any of us are going through or ever will go through. Father, it is sustained and given by you. And Father, may we not forget to say thank you. May we this day find joy, but also, Father, may we this day find peace. Not one that the world seeks to give us, but, Father, the peace that only you can give us. Thank you for each person that is here this morning. We thank you for all the preparations that have gone in toward making today possible. For those that even now are working, preparing a meal for us. For, for each person that is here, we just ask, Lord, your blessings upon each one. Bless the food for the nourishment of our bodies. Bless the fellowship that we have and the time that we have together. And as we sit around the table together, Lord, may you just bless that time that bring us closer to one another.
But more importantly, Father, bring us closer to Thee. Lead us now, Father, as we go now to break bread and share a meal together and then to enter into Sunday school and worship in your house. May we enter it with thanksgiving and joy. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. May God bless you. What is the name? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was